This might be the worst moment in cubing history. Sung Hyuk Nam, who was Asian record holder at the time, just accidentally reset his timer on his first solve of the 3x3 final. He ended up finishing well and getting second place with a 7.02 average behind Max Park's 6.85 average, but many think he deserved first place. Assuming he had performed as well as he did on his final four solves, he would have gotten a 6.63 average without the timer reset and a world championship title. But Sung Hyuk Nam was not the only person to get a timer reset in this competition. In fact, countless competitors DNF solves because of timer resets. Sebastian Weyer DNF'd the final solve of his final round 4x4 average, which cost him a near world record average of about 23.3 seconds, which would have secured his spot as 4x4 world champion. Fortunately, he was able to win the title despite his timer reset, but many others were not so fortunate. Multiple-time 2x2 average world record holder Rami Spahi DNF'd out of the third round of 2x2 by getting a timer reset and then failing to solve the cube on his final solve. So what happened? Why did so many people suffer from timer resets? And why doesn't this happen more frequently at other major competitions like US Nationals? The answer lies in the flawed design of the speed stacks timers used. The reset button is located on the front of the timer, right next to the touch sensitive pads used for timing. So when a cuber finishes their solve, their thumbs naturally come very close to the reset button, and... Luckily, there is a solution. Kind of. O-rings. These are installed with glue or tape over the reset button and power button to prevent cubers from accidentally hitting either during a solve. So what happened at Worlds? They were using brand new timers without O-rings, which resulted in many people accidentally resetting their timers at the end of their solve. But doesn't this qualify as equipment malfunction? Nope. The WCA regulations don't even have specific instructions for handling timer resets. And Regulation 11D makes it clear that something that is not covered by the WCA regulations must be decided by WCA delegates. And WCA delegates have made it clear that a timer reset caused by accidentally hitting the reset button is not considered as equipment malfunction. Not only is the solve not given an extra attempt, the solve is DNF'd. Should the WCA change the regulations to require O-rings, or perhaps allow extra attempts on timer resets? Or should the cubing community build a new timer with a design that places the reset button out of reach, or perhaps requires it to be held down? Just something so that it can't be accidentally hit. Actually, that's an excellent idea. Why haven't we created a timer designed specifically for speed cubing? Clearly, this speed stacks timer has a flawed design. In addition to timer resets, which aren't even fully prevented by O-rings, speed stacks timers often malfunction during normal use when the batteries are low. So why is there no battery life indicator? Not only is the design flawed and prone to malfunction, but it's not even optimized for speed cubing. The personal best recording capabilities of the timer are designed for speed stacking, not cubing. And wouldn't it be useful if the timer had a practice mode that called out inspection times to help people simulate competitions without needing someone to judge them? Why does the timer record three decimals when the WCA only records two? New cubes are great. But a cubing timer that would prevent timer resets and improve everyone's competition experience should really be our number one priority. I hope this video will help motivate the research and development of that timer. For now, use O-rings if you can. Avoid stopping the timer with your thumbs close to the reset button and avoid dropping your cube. Oh, and if the timer malfunctions because of low battery? Tough luck. Jaren? Oh no. Oh, that would do. 8.9. Yeah, I know, right? Do that. Oh. Oh, okay. You... No, I would have messed it up anyway. I already messed it up, but still. <laughs>